Sammy, come on up. I'm a magician. I have birds coming out of my neck. We're going to be talking about solents, slutters, and cutters. What all of these have in common are two head sails. Let's start with the basics. So you have your head stay, and if there's a stay immediately behind it, which is really popular on modern day sloops to give them two head sails, that is called a solent. The inner one is a solent, the outer one is the head stay. Why? What, like, why, why bother with this? Well, it's simple. The reason that people love cutters is because the stay sole is an immediately set smaller sail. Like, you need to reef your jib, well, you can just drop your jib and hoist the stay sole and you're instantly reefed. It's really nice. So you have that versatility of a big head sail and a small head sail. Now, the problem is, with a sloop, the mast is so far forward, you can't really have two head sails up here. It's just, it's not going to fit. What people do is they simply have the outer one be a Genoa, so you got this huge head sail that comes all the way back, and then if there's too much wind for that, you don't have to drop it and change your sail or do that roller reefing, which sort of works, but not really. Uh, you can just furl it in completely and then deploy your solent, which is usually a 95 or 100% jib, which means that it simply comes back to the mast, so it's a smaller sail. Now, since they occupy the exact same area because you're going pretty much from the headstay, their solents will be maybe a foot behind the other one. It's all tucked up there. You deploy your solent, it's pretty much the same spot, and it's just back to the mast. So it is your smaller head sail immediately ready to deploy. You don't have to go up on deck, you don't have to be changing sails, you don't have to be doing any of that mess. It's just roll one in, let the other one out. Now you notice I'm saying roll and I mentioned nothing about hanking. You won't see solence on a hank on boat. That's just, you won't. Because if you have a hank on head sail on a sloop and you want to deploy the other one, you're not gonna, you're not gonna mess with this. You're gonna just go up there and then unhank one sail and hank on the other. And the other reason that this is pretty much exclusively seen on roller furling is you have a giant Genoa on this side here. And you have this tiny little gap that you have to tack the entire sail through to get it to the other side. It's not going to happen. So what you have to do with the Solent is you have to furl in the Genoa all the way, tack, get on the other tack, and then let it out again. There's no way you're getting it through that little gap. What will end up happening is the sail will come back past the mast and then kind of get hooked on the Solent on the inside. And it's just not good for anything involved. The Solent, being how it's a much smaller sail and clear of everything, it tacks just fine in front of the mast. There's no issue there. One huge, huge advantage of a Solent over setting up an intermediate head stay in here, even though it'd be tiny, you don't have to mess with that because you don't have to mess with extra backstays because the Solent comes up to the masthead as well. So it's so close to the masthead that the load can be supported well and safely by the backstay. So if you're using your Genoa or you're using the jib, both are opposed by the backstay, so the loads on the mast are even and supported and everything is fine. So that means that to add a solent to your boat, you literally need to add a strong tack point and add an extra attachment at the top of the mast, and that's it. There's no running backstays, no check stays, nothing. You're done. That is the solent rig. What if you, you don't want to do a solent and you want, you know, the classic cutter style where you have a gap that you can then have your two head sails and you can tack the Genoa through it and all that. That is called a slutter. As you might imagine, based on the name, it is a sloop cutter. So just like with the Solent, the inner, the inner force stay we'll call it now because it's not a Solent anymore. A Solent is only just behind the head stay and up there with it. If it's further aft, like in this case where it's back here, and you have a nice gap here, it is not a solent. It is, it is then an inner force day. What is the point of doing that? Well, okay, the whole issue of you can't tack your, your head sail through the narrow slot of a solent, well, if you have a slutter rig, you can. And it's, it's pretty much a staysail setup. But the problem with the staysail is they come up really short on the mast, and then you have just this tiny little area. It's, it's worthless. So the idea of a slutter is since you can't really have a long staysail coming way far back, because that'd be a staysail Genoa, 
which will then kind of defeat the purpose of the smaller sail if it gets really windy and all that stuff. So what you do is you simply make the sail taller. So you still get the sail area, but it doesn't overlap the mast. So then it's easy to manage in uh, all sorts of situations. If you're short tacking, it, it just goes right through. There's no issue of it fouling on your mast or any hardware on the deck. It's, it's really easy. Like us personally, we have a cutter. And when we're short tacking up a river or in a harbor or something like that, even if it's light winds, we drop the jib because it's a pain to tack. And we just go with the staysail because it's easy. So this simply gives you the ease and versatility of a staysail, but it gives you extra sail area because the sail just goes up higher on the mast. So that is a slutter. So it's the cutter setup, but on a sloop because the mast is still really far forward. Oh, and the other advantage with the slutter, since it goes all the way to the top, you don't have to mess with running back stays or check stays or anything. It's, it's done. The third version of this is an actual cutter. So this is the one that everyone talks about for blue water boats and on and on and on. And honestly, yeah, they're, they are really awesome for that. The reason for it all is you have your jib, which goes out here, or general, whatever you want. You have your head sail. And then you have this magical area here for your staysail. So the main's back here, your staysail's here, and then you have a head sail up here. Now the staysail is low, so that means that if the wind picks up, it's nice and low. So then all the forces on your boat are lower on the mast, which means that you're not going to heal as much. The staysail on our boat and on most cutters, the staysail is actually cut as a storm jib. When the winds get nasty, you get rid of all your other sails and your storm jib is already ready. You don't have to dig it out of the locker, you don't have to hank it on in a storm, it's, it's there and it's, it's really nice. The other advantage of a staysail is it's an extra sail that you can use to help channel the air between the jib and the main and you can use it just to you know, tweak things to get the balance perfect. Like we really use our staysail all the time. Our standard raising anchor procedure is if we have plenty of space we raise the anchor, raise the staysail, get on a course, get the main up, then get the jib up. If we are in like really tight areas we raise the main with a uh, with two reefs in it that way it's small so we don't get going too fast and uh, once we have the anchor up we get the staysail up quick and then we can go upwind, we can go downwind. The staysail and a double reefed main are about the same size so you are totally balanced on this tiny little area. And that reefing balance business is really important because if you have a sloop and you reef your jib and you have, say, roller furling, as you furl your sail in, it goes moving forward, which means that the force of that sail is moving forward. So it's coming away from the mast and up at the bow. As you reef your main, it comes in to the middle. So what you've done is you've taken your sail area that was like this and done this, right? What that means is the boat's going to be pulling the leeward and it's going to be off balance and really hard to control. Now with a cutter, this goes away. You roll it up, drop it down, whatever you want to do. This guy's out of the equation. Now you have a sail here and a sail here. So you've literally taken your sail area that was like this and brought it in. So it's nice and centered right over the middle of the boat and it's, it's beautiful. Like you can sail comfortably, well, you can sail less awfully in a storm with a cutter than you could in a slope. Like, it's not comfortable in a storm. And anyone that says, oh, this makes storms comfortable is lying because there's nothing comfortable about a storm. So that is the beauty of a cutter. The downside of a cutter, and this is why most production boats aren't cutters, is because, as you can see, this guy right here, there's no backstay for it. So if you had this actual setup on a boat, going to happen when you load up your staysail is it's going to do some really weird things here with the mast. What you need are called either running back stays or check stays and they're back stays for your staysail. So they go from here to the back. Now if you have running back stays they run all the way to the back of the boat like this at pretty much the opposite angle of whatever the inner force stay is. So they go to the back. So pretty much it comes up and then it goes back down, right? Now the problem is when you're sailing and the boom goes off to the side, it, it's going to run into those backstays. So that's why they're running backstays, which means every time you tack and everything, you have to tighten the windward one 
and loosen the leeward one so that way the boom can swing. And then when you tack, you have to switch it back, and it's it's a pain. So that's not really popular on boats for people who are learning how to sail to be like, oh, by the way, you have to do all these extra things too, or else the mast will start going like this. What is the alternative? Like, we don't have running back stays. We have what are called check stays, which simply go from here straight down. They're aft of our lower shrouds, but they're far enough forward that we can still swing the boom out pretty darn far and not run into anything. That means that we get to be super lazy about it and we don't have to think about setting the running back stays or anything. It's just the boom goes out, the boom goes the other way, and the check stays simply run down and along. Now the issue with check stays is the angle that they work is horrible. So the same with the sloop, how when the head stay angle is super close to the mast, it's a nice tight angle and then you have a wide angle to the back stay, the back stay has a lot more pull on it. So as this pulls, the head stay would get super tight. Well, it happens in reverse here. So your check stays come off at kind of a tight angle. So when your sail pulls and like kind of billows out a little and, you know, gets the head stay sag on the inner force stay with the staysail, it makes those check stays super tight, which means that they have to be really, really strong to oppose that force. So that's, that's the downside to check stays. Running back stays are usually, you know, rope that you can set by hand. Really big boats have winches for them. Sammy's got to poop. One second. Oh yes, she's potty trained. So, uh, big boats will have winches dedicated for the running back stays. Like, it can get complicated. Check stays are an... They're kind of a cop-out way. I mean, they're... They work, but they're easy, but they're not the best. But, honestly... It works. A huge trick to dealing with check stays is you can look at your standing rigging as the way that holds up your mast. You can also look at your sails as a way to hold up the mast. Even though the sails are things putting forces on them, you can direct the forces to work with them. In bad weather, we never do just the staysail because then you have this going on, right? The mast will start pumping. You know, the check stays are set, but we always have some sail behind helping to pull the mast back. So the two together or pulling on the mast, and, you know, really pulling on the mast. And we'll set the head of the mainsail either at the height of the staysail or just below. So it's right back here, and the leech of the sail is actually going to be pulling back as well. It all works together, and instead of being a single point that's pulling the mast with the stay, it's the whole surface with the sail pulling the, the mast. So. That's kind of our way that we've gotten around ever having the mast pump on us, because that's that's a thing. If we had the mast pumping a whole bunch, we would definitely need to upgrade to running back stays. Uh, until that point ever happens, we just kind of take it easy. And then the other super huge thing, especially with a cutter, it, I mean, if you have a cutter and you're going blue water cruising, you're not racing, because if you were racing, you wouldn't have a cutter. When the winds get really nasty, reef. The force that goes on your rig is only supplied to the rig via your sails, and the sails receive this force from the wind pressure that's hitting them. Wind pressure is a factor of wind speed and sail area. The faster the wind speed is, the higher the wind pressure is, and then the more force is applied to the sail because it's got all the size. So if you make the sail smaller, you'll still have the same amount of power from the sail as on a nice light day, but just on less sail. Rather than, you know, going super fast and, you know, hitting haul speed in a gale and, you know, just ripping through, reef. Go five, six knots. Like, yeah, you're not going as fast as you could, but a lot less force on the boat and then everything's happy. And that's, that's kind of how we've been doing it. If the winds get really bad, we reef. Uh, we were talking about how when he circumnavigated, he had to replace his standing rigging three times because the wires would break. Well, he also talked about you know, being full sail in a lot of wind, often. So, reef. Like, like your rigging is breaking because that's too much sail for the conditions. Like, yes, the boat is an incredibly huge boat and can handle it, but the rigging can't. So just make the sails smaller, and then everything's easy. For us, personally, we don't heel past 15 degrees. If we hit 20, we put a reef in. And it's not that, you know, we don't like healing or we're sissies or anything like that. It's just, literally, your boat is an airplane wing. 
it, it's a plane, and here's your fuselage, and this is one wing, and the other wing is in the water, and it's your keel. Now, at the bottom of it is all this lead, this dead weight down there trying to keep you up. So as you go healing over, you're actually doing enough force to pull that lead up, right? The further you turn, the more force you're putting to keep the boat healed over at that angle because it's the equivalent of taking a boat hook and then picking up a bucket of rocks and, you know, just like holding it out. So you can pick it up because it weighs, say, 10 pounds and you can lift that. So you lift it up, no big deal. You go a couple degrees, you can still do it. As you start getting out there, it is hot. Like, it's heavy and hard to do and, like, holding it like here is a nightmare. So this force that you're complaining about having to do with a stick and a bucket of rocks, that is what your rigging is doing all the time because you have sails and keel and the rigging comes down to the hull and it, it's gotta, like, the thing that's pulling you over is the rigging pulling your hull up. That's it. If you're out there and it's like super windy and you're healing over really far, you're just putting force on the boat that it doesn't need to have. And if you reef, stuff is A, a lot more comfortable on board, and B, it's a lot less force on your rigging. That is why cutters are just often favored as like the best blue water boat and blah blah blah. It's simply because when they reef, everything comes to the middle and it's a lot more comfortable. Now, that's not to say that sloops and racing boats and everything can't make it across oceans, because in all honesty, the boats that go around the world the most, I personally would say, are those, like, ultra racing boats that you see in the Amoka Challenges and the uh, Volvo Ocean Race. Like, those guys are going, and they are the lightest, flimsiest things that can possibly make it around the world. They are machines that do it incredibly well. If you notice, they race and then they get a full rebuild. And then they race again. It's it's this process. You never see one that's been cruising with like the same sails for 20 years because they break, they die. Anything can make it. Anything can do this. I mean, they even cross oceans in rowboats. Like you don't need uh, a floating tank to make it across an ocean. What you need is good rigging, good sails, steering, and time. And you just wait for the weather to be right, and you go when it's good. When it's not good, don't go out there. So that's that's it. Like, if, you're, if your dream boat isn't the category of boat that you think you need to have to go do something, get your dream boat. Why not? And be happy. And just sail and cruise where you can, because that's the rigging that you have. We, having a heavy cutter, we're never going to compete in a race, and if we did, we're never going to win that race. If we had a sloop, we might do that if that's a thing we're interested in. I hope that answers with that little tirade. I hope that answers the difference between a sloop, a solent, a slutter, a cutter. Because those are all words. If the mast is forward, two head sails, set like a cutter but going all the way to the top, it's a slutter. If it's two head sails and they have it set like an inner force they like on a cutter but the mast is really far forward and it's still a sloop, that's just a tiny thing. And they actually call those baby stays because they're just tiny little guys. And they're just there to help support the mast and give it some extra bend and hold everything nicely. They're actually really common on boats like Benito's and stuff. And then a Solent is when the, well actually it's this guy. And it goes all the way to the top and you have the availability of two head sails. But the important thing is they're set for aft. Never side to side because side to side does not work. That was tried in the 70s and stopped in the 70s. So, there we are. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and message us directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.